It's our Wild Preps fan-voted small school game of the week, and it takes us to a Bighorn Basin rivalries. The Grable Buffs will take on the Riverside Rebels in a big matchup in Class 1A9. Man, kind enough to join me on the phone is the head coach of the Grable Buffs, and that's Jeremy Poska. And, Coach, thanks so much for your time, first of all. And then second, I guess, sitting right now at 3-2 and two in the season, how would you describe what you've seen out of your team so far this year? Well, so far, you know, we've seen a lot of good things. Um, you know, with being a new coach and a new offensive system, um, you know, we, we kind of expected some growing pains along the way. But, you know, the kids approach each week with a, you know, pretty awesome mindset, and they just want to come out and compete and play some awesome football. So we're excited for every opportunity that we have. What would you say has been the key to success that you've seen on the football field thus far? Well, key to success for us is definitely uh, having an intensive level on both sides of the ball, you know, coming out and to compete and um, executing uh, on our plays and being sure not to, you know, have turnovers. You know, that can be pretty detrimental, especially a nine-man when it's it's a little bit more of a faster-paced game than your typical 11-man games. How have you adjusted as a coach to the nine-man game, speaking of that? Um, with me, uh, you know, we, we just try and stick to the basics of stuff that works. You know, I, I really thoroughly enjoy smash mouth football. Um, you know, the, we've got to set up a good running game, uh, to keep the defense honest. And, you know, from there we can set up some good passing plays. Uh, so, you know, being fundamentally sound in that aspect really helps, you know, determine how your team's going to do moving forward. What would you say about how you've looked offensively, uh, whether it's Irving Castro running the ball or Kale Wright, your quarterback, trying to throw the ball or run the ball? What have you seen out of your offense thus far? Uh, from what I've seen out of the offense thus far, you know, Irving Castro, he does a really good job for us. Uh, he's he's a quick athletic kid. He can bust off on the outside, really challenge defenders. Uh, his his explosive speed pays off very well. Um, you know, Kale Wright, he's got a, a really good head on his shoulders. He can make some really good adjustments to the defense and, and make plays happen, even if the defense seems to bust up one of our routes. Um, <clears throat> some of the young talent that we do have coming up, um, especially uh, Carlos Rodriguez, he's been getting a bunch of snaps since Irving went down with injury. He's another kid that's really fast and has a good football mind to make the plays happen for us. So I'm really enjoying this. And it looks like you've got a little bit of a one-man wrecking crew on defense uh, anchored there by Jake Schlattman. Now, I know you got some other guys that are pivotal, but Jake's having a heck of a season. Oh, absolutely. Jake, he's he's our dude on defense. Uh, he, I haven't seen a guy yet that Jake is scared to come up and, and play some contact football with. Um, you know, he makes really good reads, and he just commits everything to that play uh, with, you know, just shutting down the run or getting in the quarterback's face and, you know, making him pay to be on the opposite side of that young man. He is, you know, definitely a tough, tough competitor. So, It's your first foray into this big rivalry between the Buffs and the Rebels. What are you looking forward to in this game coming up Friday? You know, I'm looking forward to, you know, just a, a stellar performance from our team. Um, I'm I'm thoroughly convinced that this is going to be a, a type of a bar fight type of game. You know, both teams, no matter what the record is, you know, I think they're going to come out and play some really stellar ball. It's going to be a very physical game. And, you know, the team at the end of the day that wants it more, I think, is going to be the one that wins. Well, and speaking of which, you know, what are you looking at when you see Riverside on the other side of the football field? What do you kind of expect from the Rebels Friday night? Well, you know, I, I was assistant coach there for three years, so I expect nothing more than those boys to show up and play some physical ball. You know, they're they're not going to go down without a fight, and I respect that, you know, because we're both eyeing up trying to get into the playoffs, and unfortunately we're both standing in each other's way. So I was I'm, I'm thoroughly – Looking forward to it. I was going to say, Coach, this this could basically decide that four seed out of the West in nine, man. So, I mean, is this really the the pivotal game that you've got here in the last few weeks of the regular season? Oh, absolutely. You know, to me, I, I've stressed it to the guys that this this is playoff football right here. This this week is what's going to decide uh, what the rest of our season looks like moving into the postseason. So, uh, this is a very important game for either team, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping we pull out the win on it. So with your experience being in Riverside before, does that give you a little insight into what to expect uh, from Coach Mitchell's squad, or, or do you feel like they've changed some things up since you've been there? You know, I feel like uh, they, they've changed some things up drastically. I can notice that on film. Um, 
you know, and I'd love to say that I know the kids well enough to, to see through some of the things, but, you know, they've done a really good job coaching these kids up this year and, and uh, keeping them honest and, you know, giving an offense and defense that you have to respect. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they bring to us on Friday. Statistically, you guys look very close offensively, defensively. So what are some big keys that you got to see out of your ball club to tip the uh, margin in your favor Friday night, you feel? I think some of the big keys in our favor defensively, you know, we need to put up some pressure on their quarterback. Uh, they've got a stellar receiver, Garrett Ellis Rudd, who's a senior for them this year. Uh, we, we've got to play some pretty honest ball against them and, you know, try and shut down him as a receiver. And, uh, you know, that should help us on the defensive front. Offensively speaking, we've just got to be sound on our blocking schemes, give our quarterback some time and, you know, create those lanes for our running backs and see how it handles. Coach, thank you so much for your time and best luck in this big rivalry Friday night. Hey, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Continuing the conversation with our Wild Prep Small School Game of the Week is voted on by you, the fans. It's a big rivalry matchup in the Bighorn Basin. The Gray Bowl bus taking on the Riverside Rebels. And kind enough to join me is Riverside head coach Jason Mitchell. And coach, first of all, sitting right now at 2-3 and three in the season, but 2-2 two and two right there in that four spot. Uh, how would you kind of describe what you've seen out of your team through the first five games? We've seen a lot of improvement. Uh, we we went into week one with, I would say, about 15% of our offense and about 25% of our defense. And we we even told the kids that sometimes you do some things, you don't really inform them. But we told them straight up that we were not expecting to be who we can be until like week five or six. And we kind of thought last week might be that week where we could really show what we have. But we ran into that, that double wing out there in, in Wind River, and mm-hmm. we're hoping this is the week where we can really put things together and, and be the team that we think we have the potential to be. I want to talk about the matchup against Grable, but how big is this game? Because it almost looks like it's a de facto playoff game with one of you possibly locking up the four spot. It has to be looked at that way. Uh, we each have three games left, but you you have to make the assumption with – the success some teams have had that they're going to continue to be successful up at the you know, top couple of spots and and not only because they're only your conference games count but when you throw in the fact that it's there's all of eight miles between us this is the biggest game for us in a lot of different ways homecoming week it's the closest rival it's as you said probably probably the play-in game to secure the fourth spot um, for us that's extremely big too because our kids really really want to even though they're going to be the one seed probably our kids really want to play pine bluff looking like the team will be at the end of the year as opposed to where we were week one well let's talk about uh you know speaking of that how are your kids focused this week given everything you talked about it's a big rivalry game and it is also homecoming and 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 so how has the focus been uh, it's been good. On on Monday, we had some early homecoming stuff that we do here at Riverside that a lot of schools wait for Thursday and Friday. So Monday, we were a little bit distracted, but by the time Tuesday and Wednesday practices rolled around, we had some of our better practices of the year. We have kids that are fighting through a little bit of injury that we couldn't have set out if we wanted to, and our mental preparation was, was as good as it's been since probably the first couple of days of summer camp. Well, let's talk about some of your guys that are having good years. Uh, talk about Ty, uh, your quarterback Trenton, and even your receiver Garrett Ellis Rudd. Uh, what have they done on that side of the football that you know that that you know maybe is hopefully coming along in the right direction for you? Well, Ty is a is a physical running back. It is hard to remember when your column plays that he's a sophomore. He's wow. he much prefers to run through people or over people as opposed to running around them. Um, he's we had to calm him down a couple times in camp so we didn't get our young kids, our scout team members, you know, injured. He he has a motor and it's either on or off. There's no levels of effort when it comes to him on the football field. Trent, it's his first year as a full time starter and when you figure in that not only as an underclassman was he not a starter, but he was playing six man football, he's probably had to make the biggest adjustment of any of our kids. He you know, to go from a, a six man skill position player in general to a nine-man starting quarterback was was quite a bit of a jump and so he's probably progressed further along from what he was this summer till now as much as or even more than any of our other kids 
uh, he's been throwing the ball real well toward the end of the season. And we've even had a few plays where there have been interceptions and he came over to me and he's, he's asked, you know, is, is that the one that we talked about? And he, I'm like, yep, that's the one we talked about. And when you get a quarterback that while playing a game can look back and remember things that you've talked about in practice and in the off season and in meetings, like, you know, his mind's starting to catch up with where his physical tools are. So I'm really looking forward to him for the second half of the season. And then uh, Garrett Ellis Rudd is probably about as good a receiver as you're going to find in in one a nine man. If we had a little bit more developed passing game earlier in the year, I think his stats would be much different. Um, not only has he not gotten the ball, or have we not gotten the ball in his hands as often as we'd like, but he's also played more or less the equivalent of a full game at quarterback. Wow. Trent was he Trent was out sick for one full game and another full week of practice where he didn't practice. And so they split time at quarterback in that game. So Garrett's receiving numbers are really about two and a half games worth of, of receiving. Um, so I would expect his numbers to take a big upward turn starting this week. And then Dylan Alexander looks like he's the guy that anchors your defense. Uh, you know, what have you seen in his play on that side of the ball? So Dylan started week one at defensive end after having a really exciting summer camp experience. And he thought that's where he fit the best. And just through happenstance and some gut feelings, we slid him back to linebacker after the first week, and he just has flourished. He's been – he's one of those players It's just you can't, you can't coach some of the things he does. He, he understands the defensive scheme and what we're trying to get out of different calls, but – you just you're not going to pause a film and have him in the wrong place. You're not going to look at the end of a play and see him anywhere but right next to the football. He's pretty impressive instincts on the defensive side and and it's it's shown through his performances. Well, let's talk about the big rivalry matchup with the Gray Bull Buffs. You mentioned him just up the road. Uh what are you looking for when you see the Buffs and what do you kind of expect in Friday night from coach uh, Posca's squad? It's funny I'm of all the people on our team and our staff I'm the one that has the least information here because uh he coached last year over here at Riverside so yeah he told me that <laughs> our uh, our players know him our players know their kids our coaches know him as a coach and our coaches probably even know a good number of their kids and so the familiarity you know of being eight miles away really changes the dynamics of of coaching you have to remind the kids that your opinions and your preconceived notions and your memories of what they were like in middle school and as a kid, like those just don't play into where they are now. We have to play our football and, and not worry about who it is we're playing. You know, you can you can use that as a motivator heading into the game, but when it comes time to play, you just have to you have to worry about you. Um, as far as what they do, you know, they're bigger than us. There's no question. I expect them to to live or die with the things that that they have done the best. Uh, they really stuck with the running game against Rocky Mountain and, and had a lot of success being patient and getting that three yards in the cloud of dust and hoping to break a few big plays in there. And I would expect them to probably try to lean on their size advantage. And I'm, I'm guessing they'll hope that, you know, especially by the third and fourth quarter, maybe that can wear on us a little bit. All right, well, let's put a big bow on it, Coach. What's got to happen in this game for you guys to have success, you feel? I think we have to continue to be uh, versatile offensively. We haven't put up very good offensive numbers, but our performances from one play to another have gotten progressively better every week. Potentially our best player is actually one that we haven't talked about, and that's Porter Duncan. Uh, he plays what we call our H-back, spends about half his time as a fullback, the other half kind of as a as a wing or tight end. He's kind of the most versatile of our players, and, and we move him around a lot. And, I think maybe the the biggest thing we have to do is be able to get the ball into everyone's hands. Uh, you know, Ty's obviously going to get the most touches as our number one running back, but I think if we want to be successful against them, that ball is going to have to be spread around between Porter and Ty and Dylan and Garrett and even our our second receiver, Josh Wildman, mm -hmm. has started to have a couple catches a game now, and I think he can even contribute at the level that that our top three or four contributors have been doing so far well coach it sounds like you're looking forward to this first rivalry matchup i wish you all the best go enjoy it on friday night 
Will do. It's going to be a fun one. Homecoming week always makes for some distractions during the week, but it definitely adds some some excitement come game time on Friday night. Well, best luck to you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.